Hello and welcome to our special edition of Nature Live Online, our family festival spooky quiz. My name is Rosie and I'm going to be your host for today. So this family quiz is part of our family festival Autumn Explorers and we're going to have lots of questions for you today. Some of them will test what you already know, maybe even link to some schoolwork. Some of them will need you to look and listen carefully using your scientific skills. And some of them might need you to work in a team. So this is a quiz for you to play with your friends and family at home. Hopefully we have something for everyone. And very excitingly, we're also going to be joined today by three very special guests. So I'd like to say a big hello to Christina, Mike and Khalil as they join us this morning. So hello you three, hopefully you're there and you can hear me. Hi, I'm looking amazing on this spooky occasion. So those of you at home that have been watching Nature Live online so far may recognize Christina, Mike and Khalil from our fantastic series so far. They've been brilliant at quizzing our scientists throughout the last few months, but today the tables have turned because they're going to be taking part in the quiz today too. Now you might be thinking that they have a bit of an unfair advantage. They work at the Natural History Museum. They are scientists themselves. So we thought we would level the playing field a little bit. Rather than you compete against them, we're going to ask you to join one of their teams. So Christina, Mike and Khalil are each going to be a team captain. You'll choose which team to join. And then at the end of the quiz, you'll get to add whatever your team captain scores to your own points. So that could be a nice boost to your score if you choose carefully. So to help you make that all important decision, we should hear more from our team captain. So we'll start off with Christina. Hello and good morning. Hi Rosie, good morning. Thank you so much for having me here. Now, Amazing, tell us more about your team. Right, so in case you haven't guessed, I'm the amazing team star no smoke. Now I live on the ground and I'm, I'm almost blind. But my star nose allow me to see with touch. I feel my way around the underground with my nose and catch my prey super quickly. I'm one of the fastest eating mammals that exist. And I'm going to eat the questions as quickly as I eat my prey. So I might be blind, but there won't be a question that escapes my sense of touch. So join me, join t Team Estamos No Mo, and you'll be getting loads and loads of points. Amazing. I like that little bit of fighting talk already from Team Starnos there. Amazing. Who do we go to next? Uh, let's see what Team Mike is all about. Hello. Hi there. Tell us more about your team today. Uh, so today I am representing Team Stinkhorn with the help of my friend Stinky here. Uh, say hello, Stinky. So you should join Team Stinkhorn because Stinky is an octopus stinkhorn. It's an awesome type of fungus or mushroom that's quite rare in the UK. Now, they don't actually move like this. Uh, so, Stinky, can you just pretend to be an octopus stinkhorn in the wild for a second? There we go. So, this fungus starts out like a slimy white alien egg, and then these pinky red arms start poking out, and they look a bit like octopus arms. And if that's not enough for you, they attract flies to move their spores and reproduce by smelling like rotting meat. <laughs> yep, that's why we call you Stinky. Thanks, Stinky. Amazing. Thank you, Team Stinkhorn. And last but not least, let's hear from Khalil more about his team. Hello, I'm here representing Team Prickly Fish. We're named after the prickly anglerfish. Anglerfish live deep in the ocean where it's very dark, as you can see from my underwater lair. It's hard to see down there, so hunting for other fish to eat can be very difficult. That's why us anglerfish have come up with a clever solution. We get our dinner to come to us. We stay very still and use a special glowing lure, as you can see on top of my head, like a fishing rod to attract curious little fish towards us. When they get close, all of a sudden we gobble them up. I'm hoping Team Prickly Fish can gobble up the competition and win this. Now, I'm going to take off this part of my costume because it's very dark in here, so maybe sunglasses aren't super helpful. 
<laughs> Amazing. I like a little bit of fighting talk there from Team Prickly Fish too. So time to make your decision at home. Which team is for you? Team Starnose, Team Stinkhorn, or Team Prickly Fish? Let us know in the comments. Now, whilst you do that, I'll tell you a little bit more about our awesome family festival. So we have some activities taking place on site at the museum if you are able to visit. But if not, don't worry, because we have lots of activities online as well. It's all part of our autumn adventures. So do check out our website and see what activities you'd like to take part in. Now, we thought autumn is quite a spooky time of year. So a spooky quiz would be just perfect for today. We will be starting off warming up with some general autumn questions and things will get spookier as we go on. So now I think I should tell you about the rules. We're going to have three rounds with four questions in each. I'll ask you the question, give you a short while to think of your answer in your team, and then let you know the answer right away. This means that you don't need to write anything down, but it could be a good idea to have a pen, paper nearby so you can keep track of your score. There will be one point for each correct answer. So that means 12 points in total, and then at the end, you will add on whatever your team captain scores as well. Now, we do want you to talk at home in your teams about what you think the answer is, but please don't write your answers in the chat box. And if you do see someone writing answers in the chat box, don't be tempted to copy them because they might not have the right answer. So stick to what you think is best. I think we are almost ready to get started. I am very excited for this quiz. I think our team captains are ready as well. So we will dive straight in to round one. Now round one, as I said, we're gonna start off warm up with some autumn changing question to warm us up before we get into more spooky things later on. So question number one. Lots of different living things are getting ready for the seasons to change. And some plants are starting to shed their leaves to save energy. But not all of them do this. So here we have five common plants. Two of these do not have leaves that change colour and fall off in the autumn. So which two of these do not change colour and fall off in autumn? So is it holly, plain, oak, sycamore, or cedar. So hopefully you might recognize some of the shapes of these leaves from when you're walking around at the moment. You see lots on the floor at the moment. You don't need to know the names, just think about the shapes and patterns that you see. The reason that the trees and plants are doing this is because there isn't as much sun around in autumn and winter, and by shedding their leaves, they're actually saving energy and water as well. So hopefully you have your answers ready. We can reveal that the correct answer is holly and cedar. Well done if you said those two. If you did, that is one point for you. Moving on to question number two. Now, it wouldn't be a family festival quiz without a poo question. So as the autumn changes, we start to see that different animals also have a change in their diet based on what food is available. So for example, foxes. In the summer, they eat lots of fruits and berries because there's lots of those available on the plants. But as we get into autumn and winter, there's less fruit around, so they might be eating more small mammals. Here we have two pictures of fox poo. Can you work out which one is from the summer around August time and which one is from the autumn, so around November? You're going to have to look closely at the poo, have a look at what's inside to help you work this one out. Uh, it's a bit of a strange question, but I think everyone does love a poo question deep, deep down. Hopefully you've got your answers ready at home. We can reveal that the correct answer is, so it was the autumn there on the left and the summer on the right. Well done if you got that right, that's one point for you. You might have spotted the seeds in the autumn, oh, sorry, in the summer picture there from where all the fruits and berries were available. And if you were looking really, really closely, you might have noticed in the poo on the left, there were bits of fur and hair. It gives us a clue that that animal was eating lots of small mammals. So well done. Question number three. 
So lots of different animals are getting ready to hibernate at the moment. So things like hedgehogs and even frogs and insects. There are lots of ways we can help our hibernating friends. Here are four options that might help them, but one of these is not a good way to help hibernating creatures. So which of these is not a good way to help nature this autumn? Is it A, check bonfires before lighting them? Is it B, tidy away all of the leaf litter? Is it C, build shelters for mini beasts and hedgehogs? Or is it D, talk to your neighbours about making small gaps in the fences? So that's a, some strange ideas there. What might help nature this autumn? Hopefully you've got some ideas at home. We can reveal that the correct answer is... B, B, tidy away all of the leaf litters. You get one point if you said that. Now, it might sound a bit strange. The reason that this is not a good thing to do to help nature this autumn is because when the leaves fall, actually lots of creatures use them to keep them nice and warm. They might use them to make a nest or a den. So if you are tidying up the garden or park near you, do leave some leaves off to the sides for any chilly creatures. Another thing that we saw then that might be quite a nice thing to do is making some shelters for hedgehogs and insects. And if you want to have a go at doing them, you can head to our website where we've got some videos um, of a ladybird lodge and how to make a hedgehog home as well. And one of the things you might have been worrying about, uh, wondering about there, talking to your neighbours about making small gaps in the fences. Well, that can be really useful for hedgehogs. So hedgehogs can find it difficult to move between different gardens. So if you think you might have hedgehogs near you, you can talk to your neighbours and see if you can make gaps in the fences for them to crawl through. So I'm very excited because we're getting towards the end of round one, which means it's time for question four, which is our spooky specimen question. <laughs> So for our spooky specimen questions, we're going to hear from each of our different team captains. We're going to hear from them about their favourite spooky specimen in the Natural History Museum collection. They're going to describe it to you and you're going to need to listen carefully. Once they finish describing it, we want you to work out what it might be. Now, we have over 83 million specimens in our collection, so we will narrow it down for you a little bit. After you've heard the description, we're going to give you three choices. Okay, so make sure you listen carefully. Let's welcome back Team Starnose for our first spooky specimen. Hello, Rosie. Okay, everyone. So my spooky specimen is actually not so much a specimen, but a scientist assistant. Now, they love to eat rotting flesh. And even though they normally live underground, we actually keep some of them at the museum and they're alive. Now, what they do at the museum and how they help scientists is by eating the rotting flesh of a skeletons that scientists want to study in depth. So that way, by keeping the skeletons really, really clean, scientists can look at all the little bits that otherwise will be really difficult to see. Now that's how they help the scientists. But a little bit more about them and how they live in the world. Well, as I said, they live underground and they don't have a backbone, but they do have six legs. Okay, so a nice start to our spooky specimens there. Something that eats flesh. Here are your three options. Do you think Team Star Nose was describing A, an amphipod shrimp, just look at that, that is so bizarre. Do you think it might have been B, a skin beetle? Or do you think it might have been C, a stag beetle larvae? Hmm, okay, I think we'll bring back another one of our team captains to answer this question. Let's bring back Team Stinkhorn. So come and join us, Team Stinkhorn. Let's see if you know what the answer is for this one. Well, we found this a uh, bit of a challenge, didn't we, Stinky? Um, so we were having a think, and 
an amphipod shrimp. We've not seen one of those before, have we? No. I, I wondered whether that was something from the sea. And Christina said it had six legs. Um, and we've seen beetles before, and they have six legs. Uh, and it's got skin in the name. She said it eats flesh. So we think it might be skin beetle, don't we, Stinky? Yeah. So we're going with skin beetle. Okay, so skin beetle for Team Stinkhorn. Hopefully you've got your answers ready at home. We can reveal that the correct answer was... Skin beetle. Well done if you said that. That is the end of round one. So at home, let us know your scores so far. You can type them into the chat box. And whilst you're doing that, let's bring back Team Starnos to find out a little bit more about those awesome skin beetles of the spooky specimens. Well done if you get the right answer. It was a little bit tricky. We had another beetles there and the really cool uh, um, crustacean, but I just love skin beetles. They are also called the Mestis beetles. And in fact, rather than me telling you about them, Rosie, why don't we just have a look at them working? I've got a, a video of them eating rotting flesh of a specimen. Oh, I don't know, Team Stardust. I don't think our viewers at home want to see flesh eating beetles eating rotting flesh. Do you want to see that at home? I don't think. Let Let's check with our other team captains because I know that they can be a little bit squeamish as well. I don't know. What do you think? Do we want to see flesh eating beetles at work? Okay, well, it seems like our team captains do. I'll tell you what, if at home you are a little bit squeamish, maybe you're still eating your breakfast or something like that. I think we've seen that a few people are in the comments. You might want to look away for the squeamish video. It's about 10, 20 seconds long. I'll let you know when it's safe to look back. But um, over to you, Christina. Tell us more. Okay, so get ready because what you're going to see is a, a eel being eaten eaten by the the mestis beetles. And uh, even if you're a little bit squeamish, you'll see that it's uh, a stop motion video. So you'll see uh, moving around. Let's see if we can see the video. There you go. You've got your eel, and then you're going to see the beetles just moving around and the different pictures and eating all the flesh. You can see the specimen gets cleaner and cleaner, less skin, less flesh is on it. And then you get the skeleton. So scientists can actually look up all the details. Isn't it amazing? That was amazing. It was a little bit gruesome. I'm pleased to see lots of people in the chat did want to see the video as well. If you were looking away, it's safe to look back now. The beetles <laughs> have gone. Thank you so much, Team Starnos. We'll bring back our other team captains because I want to see how your scores are doing so far. We can see lots of people on three or four points at home. So doing some really, really great scoring at home so far. Team Starnos, how are you doing so far? Actually, Rosie, I think people are even doing better than I am. Um, and don't worry if you pick Team Starnos, ask your team, because I'm sure that I'm, I can do better. And remember, I had my own question, which I don't get points for. But so far, I've got four, sorry, two points in total. So I got wrong the leaves question because I always clean the leaves outside my home. But I'm going to stop doing that now. So next time I'll get it right. And don't worry, I'll get all the questions right for the next one. I promise. Okay, no worries, Team Star knows. I'm sure there's plenty of time for you to catch up. Um, team Stinkhorn, there is a lot of support for Stinky and this team at home. How are you doing so far in the quiz? Well, uh, Stinky actually grows in leaf litter, don't you? So he's seen plenty of that. Uh, and he unfortunately has been pooed on a few times by a few foxes, have you? Um, so he knows about that too, unfortunately. Um, so we did really well and we got four whole points. Amazing. Well done, Team Stinkhorn. Very, very good. Team Gricklyfish, how are you doing so far? Well, our tactic of sitting still and letting the points come to us and then gobbling them up is going really well. We got all of it as well, so we're at a total of four points already. Amazing. Well done to our team captain so far. There's still plenty of time. It all could change. Well done to all of you at home. But it is now time to move on to round two. Now, round two is all about things to spot in autumn. So again, we're going to warm up with some general autumn questions, but things will start to get quite spooky quite soon. So this first question is actually a listening question. So one of the things that certain creatures do to get ready for the changing season, if they're not hibernating, is moving somewhere warmer. 
So lots of the birds in the UK might migrate, go somewhere warmer for the winter. But actually, we do see some birds arriving in the winter as well. So they might have come from slightly colder places, maybe like Iceland. So in a moment, I am going to play you three different noises of three birds that you might see in the UK over autumn and winter. So the three different birds are field fair, whooper swan and robin. You need to listen carefully to each of those noises because then at the end, I'm going to play you a fourth mystery sound and you need to identify what that is. Okay, so hopefully you are listening carefully. I will play the field fair first. Okay, that was the field fair. Next up, we've got the whooper swan. And thirdly, we have the robin. Okay, so now I'm going to play you the fourth mystery sound and you need to identify which bird it is. Are you ready? Okay, there we go. That was the mystery sound. Hopefully you were listening carefully. Hopefully you have your answers ready at home. We can reveal that the correct answer was the field fair. Well done if you got that. That is one point to you. Now question number two. So one of my favorite things to do at this time of year is to go on a lovely autumn walk. And what is really cool is you can find lots of different seeds on the ground at this time of year. So in a moment, you are going to see a picture of some of the seeds that I collected on an autumn walk recently. All you need to do is count how many different types of seeds you can see. So not how many in total, how many different types. And I'm only going to give you 10 seconds. So you might need to work as a team to make sure you cover them all. Are you ready? Go. Time is up. Okay, hopefully you managed to count them all. We can reveal that the correct answer is three. There were three different types of seeds. We had acorn, we had sycamore, and we had conker. Well done if you got that right. That's one point for you. Hopefully you weren't distracted by the pine cones. Pine cones aren't actually seeds. They, they have seeds inside them. Next time you see a pine cone on the floor, have a little look inside. They've got these really tiny little paper-like seeds inside them, but the pine cones themselves are not seeds. So hopefully that didn't catch you out. If you said three, that is one point for you. Now, just a reminder for anyone that is joining us, please don't um, post the answers in the chat box. Chat in your team at home amongst them, um, but try not to post any in the chat box for us. Now, question number three is where things are going to start to get a little bit spookier. Another thing for you to spot when you're out on your autumn walks is fungi. This time of year is brilliant for fungi. They like damp and dark conditions. So you'll start to see lots of them popping up. So here we have for question number three, three different types of fungi that you might spot in the UK. Funky sometimes have very descriptive names. So can you match the name to the funky? So the three different options there is the dead man's fingers, the brain fungus, and the devil's tooth fungus. Which one is which? Now, I should say, if you are out having a walk and you see some fungi, don't touch them and definitely never eat them. Just stand back, admire from a distance. They can be very beautiful, but we don't want to disturb them. Hopefully you have your answers 
ready at home, we can reveal that the correct answer is, ah, oh, we have the devil's two fungus on the left. That one does look really creepy, doesn't it? It looks like it's oozing. The dead man fingers in the middle, you can imagine them almost like coming up through the ground. And it was a brain fungus over there on the right. It is a type of yellow brain fungus. So if you said brain fungus, if you got all of them right, that is one point for you. Well done. Now this leads us on to question four, which is another spooky specimen. <laughs> Okay, so just like before, we're going to hear from one of our team captains to find out more about their spooky specimen. You're going to listen carefully, and then afterwards, you're going to have three options to choose from. So let's welcome back Team Stinkhorn. Hello again. So our favorite spooky specimen is stored in the dark basement area of the museum called the tank room. It's very cool, quiet, and dark here, and even a little bit smoky, which is actually quite similar to the conditions this creature would live in when it's alive. This specimen has huge eyes to help it see in the dark. Its body is quite pale and ghostly, and it has more than eight limbs. Some of these are a bit like grabbers, which it shoots out and uses to catch and gobble up its prey. Amazing. Oh, that sounds like a very spooky specimen indeed. So here are your three options. What do you think Team Stinkhorn was describing? Was it A, giant squid? Was it B, an ogre-faced spider? Or was it C, a scale worm? Look at that. What a bizarre looking creature. Um, I think we will invite back another one of our team captains. We'll get back Team Prickly Fish to see if you know the answer to this one. Hopefully you've got your answers ready at home as well. Hi Rosie. Well, a couple of these I vaguely recognise from being my deep sea neighbours, I think. I think I've seen the scale worm and the giant squid around here somewhere. But going from Mike's description, so he said it had big eyes and I'm pretty sure the scale worm doesn't have any big eyes that I can see in the picture. So that one's that out of the picture. Um, and then he said it had more than eight limbs. Now, I don't know much about things that live on the land, but I do know that spiders are known to have eight legs. Whereas my neighbor, the giant squid, it has eight arms and it has two more hunting tentacles that it shoots out. So that might be the clue that I'm going to go by. Yeah, I'm going to say giant squid. So you're going for giant squid. Hopefully you've got your answers locked in at home. We can reveal that the correct answer was... Giant squid! Well done if you said giant squid. That is one point for you. So now you can add up all your scores so far. Let us know in the chat how you are getting on. We've still got lots of support for our team captains, people at home loving the costumes. And also we've got people at home where the adults didn't know the answer, but the children did. So we're loving to see that, but we'll bring back our other team captains. So we'll bring back Team Starnose, Team Stinkhorn and Team Prickly Fish to see how they are getting on, see what scores they've got so far. So hello again. You three. Oh, we've got Team Stinkhorn back, Team Stanos as well. So um, Team Stinkhorn and Team Prickly Fish, you were both tying uh, in the last round. So we'll go to Team Stinkhorn first. How are you doing so far? Uh, we had another great round. Obviously, we couldn't get the point for our own spooky specimen, uh, but we did well on the rest of them. Obviously, we know about other mushrooms and all the other fun guys are. So we got three points, which now means we're on seven points. Seven points for Team Stinkhorn so far. Excellent. And we can see there's lots of people at home with seven and eight as well. So doing about the same. Team Prickly Fish, how are you doing? Well, uh, as, the, as the, the quiz gets a little bit spookier, I think that's where I'm getting a bit more comfortable with the questions, especially with, the, with my deep sea friend, the giant squid coming up. So we're still chomping up points. We've got another four, bringing our total to eight so far. 
Ah, oh, so you've just snuck into the lead there, Team Pricklyfish. Nicely done. And Team Star knows you had a bit of a slow start. Are you managing to catch up? Well, I did got up. I got all the questions right on these rounds. I'm not now on six points. I'm looking forward to the next round to keep gobbling answers and, and getting them all right. So, yeah, if you stuck to your Team Star Nost mole team, we're doing better. We're doing better. Amazing. And I can see that even some of our other staff members are on six points as well. Five points to some people. Everyone's doing really well at home. I can see that there are some really tricky questions. So well done if you're getting them right so far. But this leads us on to our third and final round. This is all about spooky nature. So I hope you are ready. Question number one. In a moment, you are going to see a spooky deep sea giant isopod from our collection. Now they're actually quite closely related to wood lice you might have seen in your gardens or parks, but just much bigger and much more spooky. All you will need to do is count how many legs it has, but you will only have 15 seconds. So you might need to work in a team to make sure you cover them all. So hopefully you are ready. We'll start in three, Two, one. Time's up, I'm afraid. Time's up. What a strange specimen that was. I do really like it though. Um, we can reveal. Hopefully you got your answers. We can reveal that the correct answer is 14 legs. 14 legs, well done if you got that right. Some of them were really quite hard to count. So that is one point for you. And I thought you'd like to see a picture of the other side of the specimen. And you can see one of our curators there, Miranda, next to it. And the, the deep sea giant isopod, you can see just how big it is. And I'm sure you'll agree with me, it does look just a bit like a wood lice, just giant. So well done if you said 14 legs. Now, question number two. I like this question. So if you have visited the museum before, you may have been into our investigate centre, which is our centre in the basement that is full of hands on specimens. Now, at the moment, sadly, the investigate centre is still closed. But I'd like to show you what some of our educators have been up to when there are no visitors around because they've been a little mischievous. They have jumbled up our jigsaw skeleton. So I'd like to show you a picture of our jigsaw skeletons in Investigate at the moment. And I'd like you to work out which animals they belong to. So there's two animals. Who do they belong to there? One of them might look a little bit familiar. The other one might be a little bit trickier. If you are stuck, the feet might help you out. So that one might help you out. Um, I can see lots of people got stuck on that last question there with the legs. It was really tricky to count, but well done for having a go. It's sometimes just quite tricky looking at those legs of that specimen. Um, but hopefully you've got your answer ready for our skeletons. We can reveal that the two animals were in fact a human and a horse. Well done if you got those right. I think the horse was quite a tricky one but you could maybe just put, pick out their hooves at the bottom there. So well done if you said human and horse, that is one point for you. We've only got a few questions left. Okay, so question number three, I think this is my favorite. Up next, we have a spooky primate called an eye eye. So they do look a little bit startling, don't they? They live in forests and they eat grubs that live inside trees, but they are primates just like us. So what I want everyone to do is hold up your hands, give your fingers a little bit of a wave like that, because this is something that all primates have in common, is they have fairly similar hands. But the eye eyes have one big difference. I want you to find your third finger on each hand and give that a little bit of a wiggle. The, the eye eyes have really long third fingers. They're quite skinny and they can move them around. They're very flexible. The question for you is, what do they use this long finger for? So I've got three choices for you to pick from. Do you think it is A, picking their nose? Do you think it is B, 
drumming on trees? Or do you think it is C, warning off predators? So what do they use that lovely, long, skinny finger for? Now, whilst you're choosing your answer, I just want to say that unfortunately, these animals are hunted because they look so spooky and so ugly. And that seems a little bit unfair because it's led to them becoming endangered. But here at the museum, we all think, and I'm sure lots of you at home would agree with us, that it's really important to love all of nature, no matter how spooky or ugly or slimy it might be. And I think they are often far more exciting than the cute and cuddly animals anyway. So if you have a favourite animal that's quite an unusual, spooky creature, or maybe it's even a plant or a fungi, let us know in the comments what's your favourite, unusual, spooky, slimy, ugly animals and plants and all of nature and help champion their importance as well. So hopefully you have your answers ready. We can reveal that the answer is... B, drumming on trees. They use that long finger to drum on trees and they listen for the noises that come back from the, the grubs that live inside. And then they use their teeth to gnaw away the wood and gobble up all of the bugs inside. So well done if you got that right. That is one point to you. And it actually leads us on to our final spooky specimen. <laughs> So hopefully you know the drill so far. You're gonna hear from one of our team captains, listen carefully to the description, and then you're going to have three options to choose from. So we're going to go to Team Prickly Fish. Hello everyone. So my spooky specimen comes from the deep ocean, just like me. It doesn't have any teeth, and parts of its body are totally see-through. Big eyes to help it spot it food and any predators around. In fact, it's so well adapted to living deep down in the sea that it can swivel its eyes upwards in its sockets. Look up, it can even look through the top of its head to see what's above it. Wow, that sounds like such a bizarre specimen, can look through its head. Okay, here are your three options to choose from. Do you think Team Prickly Fish was describing A, stoplight loose jar just look at that what that's such a strange specimen do you think it might be b the skeleton shrimp or do you think it might be c the spook fish oh some really awesome specimens there let's bring back another one of our team captains to see if they know the answer we're going to bring back team star nose for this so hopefully you can come back and join us hello team star nose um, hopefully everyone at home has got their answers ready, but what do you think the answer for this one was? Now, Rosie, this one is really difficult and it's because I don't live under the sea, but according to the clues that Prickly Fish was giving, I don't think it's the skeleton shrimp because I can't see any big eyes in there. I can't imagine the skeleton shrimp swimming that much. Now, I'm between the uh, stop like uh, lost jaw and the spook fish. Mm -hmm. now, he also said you don't have big teeth and it's all about the eyes. So I also really, really like this name. I think a spook fish is a great name. So I'm going to put all I've got on the spook fish and see if we can guess that one right. Okay, thank you, Team Starnos. We've got quite a lot of support going for Team Starnos in the chat as well, I think. So well done. We can reveal that the correct answer is Spookfish. Well done. And obviously very well named for this time of year as well. Fantastic. Well, that is all of our questions. So at home, you can now count up all of your scores so far. Let us know in the chat box. I'm really pleased to see that we've got people telling us that they love the blobfish and also loving slugs out there. Brilliant. Lots of quite slimy animals. But that is really good to see. Um, so let us know your scores so far. And we're going to bring back uh, Team Prickly Fish. Now, Team Prickly Fish is going to tell us a little bit more about the spook fish's eyes. But before we do that, just a little bit of a warning that we're going to have some quite, quite close up images and pictures of the specimen's eyes. So if you are a little bit squeamish about that sort of thing, maybe just look away for a few moments. I'll let you know when it's safe to look back. 
Yes, so uh, we mentioned that the spookfish's eyes are so big and, and, they can, and they can rotate. So they have their eyes facing forwards when they want to scan what's in front of them. But as we said before, the top of their head is see-through. So they can swivel their eyes up so they're looking through the top of their head. They can see what's directly above them whilst they're swimming. And they can look out for the shadows and silhouettes of tasty food, other, other ocean-going organisms. And here's the video we've got. It's a specimen that was collected by one of our museum scientists. So it's not alive anymore, but we wanted to study how the eyes move around and show you. So here you can see how they're swiveling, but it's even weirder than that because they also have a little reflective surface inside their eyes too, a bit like a mirror. So not only can they see forwards and above, but they can also see what's below them as well because there's other stuff that might be below them trying to gobble them up. Wow, thank you Team Prickly Fish. I, I really like that specimen. That is very, very cool. And um, we've got some great points coming in from everyone at home so far. We've got lots of people. We've got Sally on 11, lots of other people on 11 as well. Sophie has 10. So let us know how you've got on. But I think we want to see what your team captains have scored so we can boost your points. We've got Adeline on eight there as well. So well done. Um, let's welcome back our team captains. So Team Starnos. Team Stinkhorn and Team Pricklyfish. Hello again, you three. Is it going okay? Still hanging in there. Fantastic. So oh, I want I want to find out who's who's winning in our studio online today. Uh, there was Team Pricklyfish, you were in the lead before, and then we had Team Stinkhorn and then Team Starno. So we'll we'll start with uh, Team Stinkhorn. How how many points do you have in total? Well, uh, we kind of dropped a question on that last round, didn't we? Because um Fungi don't have skeletons, so we kind of got that one wrong. So we dropped a point. However, we still have 10 whole points. Fantastic. Well done, Team Stinkhorn. I'm sure your Stinkhorns at home will be very happy to that with that. So if you are on Team Stinkhorn, you can now add 10 points to your score. Well done. Team Prickly Fish, you were in the lead before. Have you managed to beat Team Stinkhorn? Well, I'm not an animal that's used to going very fast. And so for the first two rounds, we were doing really well, full marks every time. I mean, this round, we could only get a maximum of three because we had the other question that was our spooky specimen, but uh, I may have dropped a couple of answers that uh, it's gonna be awkward bumping into that marine isopod uh, since I got the number of legs question wrong. And a skeleton question, I, I thought it was a cow, it's a horse, I got mixed up. Got the hooves wrong, should have had some horns. But the eye eye, I mean, me as Khalil, as a human rather than my uh, prickly fish alter ego, I love eye eyes. And so I was never going to get that one wrong. So that gives one question for this round, which takes our total to nine points. Nine points for Team Prickly Fish there. Oh, I'm sure your Prickly Fish at home will be very happy with that because there were some very hard questions there. I can see lots of people found that that last round quite hard. Um, so if you were on Team Prickly Fish, I mean, nine points, that is still pretty good going. You can add that onto your score. Um, and Team Starnos, you, know, you were kind of in, in third place before. Have you managed to catch up? Well, Rosie, the thing is, I got all the questions right, yeah. So I know that the spooky specimen was really, really difficult, but I'm so glad I got that right. It was really confusing, but I got it right. So I'm now on a total of 10 points as well. And I'm really, really happy about that. Amazing, well done Team Starnose. I know all of your Starnoses at home will be jumping for joy at that. That is 10 points for anyone on Team Starnose at home. So now you can let us know how many points you have in total at home. But that means we have a bit of a tie today. We have Team Starnose and Team Stinkhorn on the same amount of points. And I think we would like to have an overall winner. So the way that we're going to settle this is we're going to have a bit of a last question. It's not really a question. We're going to ask Team Starnos and Team Stinkhorn to have a go at their best spooky laugh. And whoever does their best spooky laugh will win in our online studio today. 
So at home, we want you to have a go as well. We'll start with Team Starnos, then we'll then go to Team Stinkhorn, and then we'll hand over to you at home to have a go at Stinky Laugh. A stinky Laugh? A Spooky Laugh as well. You can have a go at Stinky Laugh too if you want. I don't want to know how that one um, ends up. So we'll start off um, with Team Starnos. Are you ready for your Spooky Laugh? Okay, I'm a bit nervous, but I, I think I can do this. I can do this, okay. <laughs> oh, Team Stardust, I really love that. It was amazing. Now, after we hear Team Stinkhorn as well, I want to hear from everyone at home who you think deserves to win, whose spooky laugh was the best. So keep, we've heard Team Starnos over to Team Stinkhorn now. Really stinky? Ooh, ah, 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 Oh, amazing. I think we're all clapping some fantastic, spooky laughs there from Team Stinkhorn. Now it's over to you at home. Time for your spooky laugh. Off you go. I wish I could hear them. I hear those spooky laughs echoing through the streets. Amazing. So who do we think deserves to win on the spooky laugh? I think I'm going to make a final decision. We've got some comments coming in from people at home. But I'm going to say that the winner was Team Stinkhorn. Team Stinkhorn, well done. That was a fantastic, spooky laugh. I think it was Stinky that won it for you there as well. I'm sure your team at home will be very pleased. So I think all that's left to do is for each of our team captains to say a bit of a farewell and thank you to their teams at home. So we'll start with Team Stinkhorn. Well, me and Stinky would like to say thank you for everyone who joined Team Stinkhorn today. Well done for everyone on all your points and thank you for voting us in the final round. We had a stinking great time and we hope that you did too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Team Stinkhorn. We'll go to Team Pricklyfish next. Well, after a pretty strong start, we seem to drop off into the end. But well done to Team Stinkhorn and Team Starnose. And thank you to all the members of Team Prickly Fish out there. Sorry I couldn't bag you those last couple of points. Maybe if we'd done this quiz underwater, things would have been different. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Prickly Fish. And last but not least, Team Starnos, you made an epic comeback. And that really was a brilliant, um, spooky laugh. So I think you did brilliantly. So any last words for your team at home? Well, I just want to say well done everyone taking part of the quiz. I've seen all your scores and you've done amazing. It was a very tricky uh, quiz, but also super well done for those of you sticking to Team Star Knows Mo because I think we caught up at the end and we ended up re doing really, really well. Uh, thank you everyone. Amazing. And I just want to say, we ha do have some people at home. So on Team Starnos, we had Steph, who got 19 points. It was amazing. We had Catherine on Team Prickly Fish with 15 and Adeline with 18 from Team Stinkhorn. So a real varied out there. So well done for everyone taking part today. Now, don't forget, there is still time to take part in our family festival online all about autumn. Do check out our website for more details on that. But next week, you can join us. The Nature Lives will be returning back to normal. We will have an awesome show all about jellyfish on Tuesday. And on Friday, we'll be learning more about the amazing scientist, Dorothy Bates. So we hope you will be able to join us for them. But for now, thank you for joining us today. And I hope you have a very special spooky weekend ahead. Goodbye. <laughs>